Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tom Compton with We Hold These Truths. I'm joined by uh, two of our members, Craig and Chris, and uh, we're kind of spread out all over the country. And uh, anyway, we're our topic today is entitled "Why Christian Zionists Support Israel's War on Gaza." And that's a very good question because. These people are supposed to be followers of Christ. His, his uh, teachings were pretty simple. Love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Uh, love your neighbor as yourself. And he threw in things like, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. So we like to call ourselves followers of Christ at uh, We Hold the Truths here because of the misunderstanding by a lot of people about these Christians who ab, uh, advocate for wars. And so we're going to be talking about four of those people that uh, are fairly well known to most people uh, that espouse what we call Christian Zionism. Now, we're not going to get into what it is. We have a litmus test. Uh, we ask people, do you believe the modern state of Israel is a fulfillment of biblical prophecy? And if they say yes, and they start to levitate off the floor, then, you know, probably we're not going to be able to talk to them. But a lot of people don't even know they're Christian Zionists. They have some bent there. But please go to uh, our website, WHTT, and watch our award-winning film, Christian Zionism, The Tragedy and Turning. So you'll be able to understand it a lot better. So um, what we're going to show first is a uh, our, our two prayers by john hagee he has a mega church in san antonio texas we've actually stood in front of his church in what we call a vigil and we hold up signs like you see behind there we didn't have innocent blood uh, gaza that was actually we made that after the uh, operation protective edge in 2014 by israel against gaza where 500 children were killed over 2,200 people um, were killed all told. Now with this war on Gaza, because of the attack by Hamas, there have been close to 30,000 people killed. 70% of these, these uh, victims are innocent uh, children and women. So we have a, a human catastrophe here. And so, why don't uh, Chris? Why don't you give us a little introduction here before we we uh, watch this video, and we can we'll talk about a little bit after we watch these two things here. But if you have an opening uh, comment or thought, sure. Um, so what we're dealing with with these videos uh, of John Heggie and Kay Arthur and and uh, several others these days are Christians who are um, living in the Old Testament mentality um, of physical wars, um, physical religion. And when I say that, I mean everything is, is literal and physical. Um, but, you know, the Bible, you know, it's, it's a book, it's a saga. It is, a, it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And the, the, the whole story, the, the Old Testament story, was to tell us things and get us acquainted with God and to show us His holiness and how um, we were supposed to be and behave through His law. And, uh, but, you know, as the story goes, people couldn't keep the law. And uh, his, his people, Israel, could not keep the law no matter, you know, what, what He did to them and what, punishing them and trying to get them right. And so the, the prophets came and gave prophecies about a future uh, kingdom, a future king who would come, a, a good king who would come to Israel, and he would uh, give them his spirit and, and write the laws on their, heart, on their hearts. And uh, through this Messiah, this king, um, Israel would be transformed. And there's a lot to this. I won't go into the details, but that's just kind of in a nutshell that Christianity has been turned from a physical kingdom to a spiritual kingdom. Um, and you'll hear this in this, uh, this video. So let me play this first clip. He was on 
uh, Benny Hinn's This Is Your Day show a few weeks before the second Gulf War uh, started in 2003. And with us today is John Hagee. We're getting ready to meet the Son of God in the heavens because we are that close. Pastor, please pray. Let's pray right now. Come on, saints. Let's all pray. You in your homes. Father, yes, in Lord. the name of the Lord Jesus, yes, I pray for our president tonight. I pray that you would give him the wisdom of Solomon to lead this nation into war against the enemies of righteousness. I pray for the good men and women in Washington, D.C., that they will stand in righteous boldness for this righteous cause. I pray in the name of Jesus that every power and principality of darkness will be brought to confusion yes. when this war begins. Yes. I pray, God, that the enemy shall be destroyed and that the angels of heaven shall go before the U.S. and British forces, bringing deliverance to that part of the world and most assuredly deliverance to Israel. Yes, For David said, he that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. Okay, well, now, now let's go to, the, that was in 2003. Let's hear his prayer on October 8th, the day after the, uh, uh, the attack by Hamas. Our Father, which art in heaven, King of the universe, the God who calls the stars by name, who holds the seven seas in the palms of his hand, Today we lift up to you the state of Israel and Jerusalem, the city of God. We pray for the families who have been shattered by this vicious terrorist attack. We pray for the women and children who are now placed in tunnels to be used as objects of negotiation in the future. We pray for the wounded from the barrage of rockets. We pray for the IDF that you give them favor to crush the enemies of God. We pray for the Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, that you give him the wisdom of Solomon in guiding Israel to victory over this tyranny. In your name we are praying. For he that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. The word says, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. The word says, I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. Let the curse of God come to the enemies of Zion. In your name we pray and ask these things. Amen. Okay, wow. That's a, a, a one-two punch there, I guess. <laughs> so, um, Craig, do you have any uh, thoughts you'd like to add to uh, what was been said there? Uh, that's being recorded. <laughs> um, yeah, we're, we're back. From the oh recording. man. Yeah. I, my, my, my blood pressure has gone up, Tom. I, I think <laughs> it, 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 as, as my face gotten, gotten red. Your face is turning really red. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, I, I'm sorry. I do get emotionally involved in this because it is so anti-Jesus. It is so anti-God. It just blows me away. And they take, this is, the, this is the ultimate eisegesis. You take a scripture here, you take a scripture here, and you turn it into meaning something that the context has nothing to do. Uh, when he says, this, this war is against the enemies of God. Well, let me think, who are the enemies of God? People that kill innocent people? You know, I mean, it, it, that whole thing just goes on. So, yeah, I could say two more, but, but Chrissy, Chris, just go Okay, yeah, so I'm going to jump in here on this. His first prayer, uh, he, he prays um, and he uh, quotes from um, Ephesians 6.12, and I'd like to read that to you because you'll notice some of the words. This is the scripture he quotes in that first prayer back with Benny Hinn. Uh, he quotes from this, and this is what it says. For we do not wrestle, we Christians, we do not wrestle or warfare against flesh and blood but against principalities and against powers and against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. So this is Paul telling us in Ephesians that 
our warfare is not physical with physical people anymore. And this is what I was saying at the beginning, how we are not living, um, our, it, Jesus said his kingdom is not of this world. Our, our spirituality is, is um, in a heavenly realm. Our, our, our Christianity operates in a heavenly realm. But what he's doing is pulling it back down here into this physical realm and using Christian terms, using the spiritual terms to um, seduce Christians into these um, uh, frenzies of, of bloodlust, really, and using these beautiful scriptures that are meant to be spiritual and turning them completely physical. Um, you know, he prays and says uh, that um, these people are righteous. He says the righteous men and women in Washington. Um, and, and the IDF, I believe he says, is righteous, that this is a righteous war. And um, so as Christians, when we look at the word righteous, um, you know, what, what does the Bible tell us, um, you know, righteousness is? And uh, he says here, and uh, we're told in Romans 1.17 uh, what righteousness is. And it says, for in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as is written, the righteous will live by faith. And then it says in Philippians 3.8, I consider, Paul says, I consider all things lost, I, that I have lost as garbage, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is, th is through faith in Christ. The righteousness that comes from God is on the basis of faith. And so, Faith, our faith is what makes us righteous. You know, Israel had, you know, 2,000 years essentially to try to prove their righteousness through their um, man kings and their warfares, but all it did was uh, cause destruction and we had evil kings and, and, and a mess. And uh, God knew that there had to be another way, and that's why He bought us Jesus and the this holy spirit and to put the kingdom inside men's hearts because kingdoms will not change until men's hearts change god right. knew that. Good. a good point let's let's move on here because we want to shift gears a little bit the next uh <clears throat> video is by a woman named k arthur uh she has a a ministry called precepts ministry and uh it's used widely through evangelical churches across the country and even some of the mainline churches. In fact, my wife uh, taught 50 of these courses before she came to me, before she passed away, that she would no longer teach K. Arthur. And you'll understand when I, when I play this, uh, why she stopped, uh, stopped uh, playing, uh, 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 teaching K. Arthur's Precepts Ministries, it's, it was like rat poison, I use the analysy. 99% mm -hmm. of it was very good, but the rat poison you'll hear right here. There are all sorts of solutions that man is offering to bring peace to the Middle East. One of those solutions is to carve out a Palestinian state out of the land of Israel. One of the things that we need to understand is God never refers in his word to the land of Israel as the land of Palestine. That is the invention of man in order to get man to stop thinking about Israel. The problem to a Palestinian state within that is it goes against the word of God. God tells us in the Torah in the first five books of the Bible, that this land is his land, and it is not to be given to another. And God has ordained that it belongs to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and his descendants forever and ever and ever. Therefore, any politician, any nation that comes up with this kind of a solution has to know you are going against the word of God you are going against the will of God, and you will not succeed. Wow. Um, now, we're going to follow this with a, um, 
uh, a, a, another clip of Kay Arthur and Ann Graham Lotz, <clears throat> Billy Graham's daughter. And uh, there, this isn't from 2014 during this Operation Protective Edge where 500 uh, Palestinian children were killed. And you'll see in this the callousness of, uh, uh, of these people. They have really, they, they substitute their compassion for uh, the killing of innocent for their theology. Uh, Watch my blood pressure this time. Uh, <laughs> this, this is again the uh, the difference between eisegesis and exegesis is that reading into a scripture is eisegesis. Reading out of a scripture, what does it mean? Is exegesis. When she says the land is God's and He gave it to His people forever, you know she's ignoring all the conditional. Uh, the, the covenant was conditional. There's, there's, you, I can, I've got scriptures, um, in, you'll never hear them at a Christian Zionist meeting because it's, it's, if you do this, if you do this, then you, you will stay in the land. If you rebel against me and do these nasty things, you, I'll, I'll kick you out of the land. One of my favorite passages is the parable of, of Jesus when he talks about the vineyard and he talks the vineyard, uh, the, the workers, and they, that goes to the end where they kill his son. And uh, the, the the owner says, what, what are they going to do to these wicked people? They're going to cast them out and give the land to to someone else. You know, that is New Testament. What happens with people that don't take care of God's land? Because it's always been his land. It's never been anybody else's land. They don't have a right to the land. It's God's land, and he can give it to whoever he wants to. If he wanted to give it to Tom Compton, then it would be Tom Compton's land. But he he hasn't. And when they when they say it's their land forever, uh, in my my podcast we did years ago, Tom, the uh, confessions of a former Christian Zionist, I expand that forever. It, the word is olam, and it means out to the distant horizon, which means as long as you're going in that course, it is. It does keep going forever. It's like the the train tracks that go on, but it doesn't mean forever as into infinity and beyond. Jonah says he was in the belly of the whale for Olam forever. It's like being stuck in traffic forever. You know, it's yeah. it's it's out. It's a long time, but it doesn't mean what uh, K. Arthur says and what most Christian Zionists say. Can Good I throw point. one? You know, I, I like to say that uh, uh, what these people do is uh, they've turned God into a, a a racist and a real estate agent uh, by by. But what they're can I, can I read here. one of those scriptures to you that, that sure. Craig, you said you got a, a bunch of them here? Because I have one handy. God, it's Leviticus 18. This is a really nice one. God just gave a bunch of laws to Israel, you know, and uh, he says, do not defile yourselves in any of these ways, because this is how the nations that I am going to drive out before you became defiled. Even the land was defiled. So I punished it for its sin and the land vomited out its inhabitants. But you must keep my decrees and my laws. The native born and the foreigners residing among you must not do any of these detestable things. For all these things were done by the people who lived in the land before you, and the land became defiled. And if you, Israel, defile the land, it will vomit you out as it vomited out the nations that were before you. So exactly what Craig was saying, it was a conditional thing. Yes. And uh, eventually it did. God vomited out uh, Israel, you know, and in, in I think it was uh, 722. And then the, he kept a lamp for David until Jesus was born. And then in 70 AD, the land vomited out uh, the Jews. And so, uh, but what she's talking about is the, the promised restoration of Israel. And this is what's going on with all these Christian Zionists is that they think that this promise restoration that is, is, is going to happen is, is what's happening now. Um, but what they're not understanding is that the, the promise restoration has happened. It was supposed to happen through the Messiah and the Holy Spirit. And there are a few other marks, but that has all been fulfilled through Christ and the church. So they're still trying to make it physical. They're still trying to bring it back in, into the physical realm, which they're taking themselves, again, out of Jesus' spiritual kingdom and putting it back here into the physical world. Yes.
Well, let's uh, let's move on here. I'm going to play this clip of uh, uh, K. Arthur and Anne Graham Lotz uh, in Jerusalem in 2014 during this war. And as a side note, it turns out that Graham uh, Anne Graham Lotz, uh, with her uh, ministry, was back in Israel here uh, in after the October 8th, uh, October 7th uh, incursion by Hamas. So nothing has changed. But let's just uh, watch this short uh, clip right here. I'm Ann Graham Lotz, and I'm standing here with Kay Arthur. We're in Jerusalem, and we just both wanted to say a word to you about our good friend Steve Dick and Inspiration Tours, mm. because we want you to know that uh, we're here at a time of war, and we feel very safe. So, Kay, I don't know if you want to say a word to the people that might be wanting to come on tour with Steve, but... I would love to. I, I believe that if you will come to Israel, if you will not cancel your tour, First of all, they won't let you come if it's not safe. That's right. Don't listen That's to right. the news. That's it's right. not like you think. I mean, we are perfectly safe here. But the other thing is, when you come, you have a ministry, besides being ministered to by what you're going to learn from Anne or from David and I. From you. <laughs> yes, and uh, uh, besides that, what's going to happen is their faces are going to light up. They're going to know that you truly trust in God. And if you trust in God and you honor them and don't listen to the news about Israel being the enemy, but you come and support them, you will minister. You will have many open doors. And you'll keep those tourist dollars coming in. Yeah. Oh my gosh. What callousness. Oh my. It, it, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Uh, what people uh, get away with. And you've got millions, we, we, we estimate 40 to 70 million American Christians are influenced by this notion of what we call Christian Zionism. And our last uh, little clip here is, uh, is uh, Anne Graham Lotz's brother, Franklin Graham, who uh, is a uh, is a Christian Zionist. We've actually, uh, one of our groups in uh, in, in Fresno, California, has uh, done a vigil in front of one of his uh, bus tours, I guess. Uh, I don't know exactly what it was a number of years ago. but Yeah, I, I want to go back to what Chris said there. You know, follow the money. You know, it's uh, two of our, our favorite uh, connections. Uh, Allison Weir uh, on um, If Americans Knew, uh, she details what, where the money going and how we got a, a, the book that she wrote uh, uh, against our better judgment uh, that yes. details how we got into this mess in the first place as a nation. You know, right now it's over t uh, 10, 11 million dollars a day, and that doesn't in in include all the armament in the billions we're sending in addition to the regular uh, 10, 11 million dollars a day that we've been sending to Israel. So yeah, it's all about the uh, all about the Benjamins. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's uh, let's hear. This was a interview. Uh, well, it's all self-explanatory when I started here. There are millions of Christians around the world praying that God will give you His wisdom, and we pray that God will give you success. And so that's our prayer. Well, thank you. Uh, uh, the fact that you're coming here, standing with Israel in Israel, yes, uh, is mightily important and uh, gives us. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of strength, a lot of encouragement. Uh, I have to say that the world today appears to be divided by two forces. Those who support the Israel and its just fight against uh, Hamas terrorism and those who support Hamas terrorism. Uh, I think Reverend Graham with your so many followers uh, around the world understand that Israel is fighting uh, a just war, fighting in, uh, according to uh, international law, trying to minimize civilian casualties, root out the terrorists, uh, and I think that's our common battle, the battle of civilization against barbarism. Well, it's good versus evil, and we know that God, uh, we know there's a God, and we know there's a devil, mm. an evil, and uh, the devil has been fighting God for we don't know how many, many thousands of years, but uh, I think Israel is God's people. The Bible tells us that. And so it's clear. And the, the, the devil wants to destroy this nation. 
wants to destroy the Jewish people. And he's tried over and over and over to do that. No, we're not going to let him do it. No, sir. Anyway, that's quite revealing, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the, uh, the deception that's, uh, uh, and this is, of course, passed on to the people that follow these people. And I used to follow Pat Robertson back in the 90s. I thought he was great, you know, and then he, well, he's passed away, but he was a Christian Zionist and did all kinds of, made crazy statements that anybody looking at Christianity say, would say, these people must be nuts. Why do they why do they think this? Any closing thoughts before we close this little episode up? Uh, so he, you know, um, Franklin says, you know, well, it's good versus evil, God versus the devil. Um, and we know that Israel is God's people, you know, and, and it's clear and the devil wants to destroy the Jewish people, the, the nation. Um, so yeah, we know that Israel is God's people. God truly does only have one people. You know, it, it is Israel. But who is Israel? Mm -hmm. That's the question. And, you know, we are told uh, that the restored Israel, remember, God promised a restoration for Israel. You know, the Bible is the story of the rise, the fall, and the restoration of Israel. And the restoration was going to come through this Messiah and his new spirit. And he was going to come back and restore the kingdom of Israel and it, it takes a king to do that. And where the king is, is, is where the kingdom is. Yes. And the kingdom of Israel has been restored through Christ and his Holy Spirit. And uh, Paul tells us really clearly in Romans that Israel has been transformed into Israel of the Spirit and transferred you know, into the heavenly realms. The new Jerusalem, Paul tells us in Galatians, she is above. Um, Jaggy says that, you know, uh, here, what's this one thing he says on Jerusalem? He calls it the city of God. And uh, I would direct everybody to go read Galatians chapter 4, because Paul makes the differentiation between the Jerusalem of the flesh, uh, this world, he, he compares it to Hagar, and the Jerusalem according to the spirit, which is above, the, the new Jerusalem, which is above. And um, Paul makes the differentiations of the old Israel, according to the flesh, the people who are still trying to do it the physical way, and the new Jerusalem, the new Israel, according to the Spirit. And that is who the Christians are and who the Christians are supposed to be. But as we can see with these people, they are taking it back into the physical realm. Um, you know, the Catholic Church did this too. They tried to produce the kingdom of God here in this world. And um, but but this is really going back to old Israel and the Christians are joining in with old Israel and they're acting like old Israel and the blindness of old Israel is upon them because Paul said that they, they are blind, that the the veil remains on them who read Moses. And so that's what we're really dealing with is, is a blindness on this Christian church because they have literally come back into the old Israel in heart and. Paul says in Galatians chapter 4, he's warning the Christians. He says there's, there's two cities, and he represents them of two women, Hagar and Sarah. And he says, if you try to come back into the old covenant, you become a child of Hagar. So you're told you can be the child or citizen of one city or the other. And he says, if you come back under the law, you're going to become a child of Hagar, the old Jerusalem. But but don't do that. You want to stay with the your mother who is the Jerusalem that's above. So we really have to understand there as Christians that um, we can choose. I've chosen the new Jerusalem. Heggie's chose the old Jerusalem. And, yes. you know, we're, we're warned about going into her because this is not the restoration of Israel that's happening here. Okay. Yes. The restoration's already been fulfilled through Christ and his church. We're waiting for the glorified kingdom for Jesus to come back. But uh, yeah. this thing is not the restoration of Israel. And, and the, when yeah. the Messiah, and all, you've probably seen all those wonderful Naturi Carta folks out there, the, the Jews who are protesting at all these. Uh, they understand this. This is why they don't accept this Zionist state. They say when the Messiah comes, because they don't believe Jesus was the Messiah and they believe he's still to come. But, but they say he's going to be a man of peace and he's going to restore the uh, Israel through peace, and I, I want to walk up to these guys and say, hey, have you guys heard of this guy named Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> because that's what he did. And well, he's still doing his yeah, work in our hearts. 
Yeah, let's not go further. I think we're getting close to the end here. You know, as I say about uh, end times theology, I don't care what what your end times theology is, as long as it doesn't involve ignoring the suffering of others. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you ignore the suffering of others, then you need to look at your theology. Well, they're propagating the suffering of others. They are actually yes, exactly. they're they are ignoring actually promoting that. it. Promoting yes, it. Yes. And we're called to love and to, you know, we're, we're called all the good stuff. They, again, they are in this uh, genocidal mentality and... Uh, Tom, I'd like to read uh, one scripture out of Proverbs before okay, we close. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, Proverbs 24, 11, and 12. And we're, we're talking about Gaza. And listen to what this says. Uh, uh, again, Proverbs 24, 11, and 12. Rescue those who are being taken away to death. Hold back those who are stumbling to the slaughter. If you say, behold, we did not know this. Does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he who keeps watch over your soul know it? And will he not repay man according to his work? No excuse. Great. Thank you. And thank you, folks, for watching. We hope we gave you some food for thought and passing on.